look at number 11. Okay, let's look at number 11. <clears throat> Here is where that information that I gave you at the beginning comes into play. Square roots are irrational numbers. When they're not perfect squares, they are irrational numbers. So pay attention. Those come in conjugate pairs. Okay, now what that means is you change the sign and it comes in a pair. So they only listed two zeros right here, but there are four. And this is actually going to be a fourth degree polynomial once we work it all out. Okay, now, I know you're really freaked out right now with the square root in there, but it's really not that bad, okay? I promise it's not going to be that bad. Just stick with me. Okay, so here we go. We change the sign, so that's going to be x minus the square root of 3. Its conjugate pair is going to be x plus the square root of 3. Well, guess what? That's the difference of not perfect squares, but that's the factoring of the difference of squares. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the square root of 10. The nice thing about this is we're not going to end up with square roots in our final answer. Okay, we are not going to end up with square roots in our final answer. It's actually not as bad as it looks. Okay, when we foil out, now this one, there is a strategy to foiling it out. You do want to pair these together and you want to pair these together. You don't want to, you know, pair the last two and then multiply it by the second one and then multiply it by the first one. You really do want to pair them together so that things cancel nicely. X times X is X squared. The outside is going to give us positive square root 3 of x. The inside is going to give us negative square root 3 of x. They cancel. Positive square root 3 of x, negative square root 3 of x, they cancel. Negative times a positive is a negative. A square root of 3 times a square root of 3 is 3. When you multiply a square root by itself, the square roots kind of cancel. Or you can look at it as you multiply what's under the square root, 3 times 3 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So look at there. Those square roots are already gone. Guess what? Same thing's going to happen with the other set. x times x is x squared. The outside and the inside cancel. Negative times a positive is a negative. Square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is 10. Please don't write 100. It's the square root of 100, which is 10. And then all we have to do is uh, foil this out x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, negative 10x squared, negative 13x squared, so, excuse me, I went ahead and added it, negative 10 and negative 3x squared, negative 13x squared, and negative 3 times negative 10 is positive 30. Okay. Um, no, they're not imaginary, it's just, they, they, they weren't good, they weren't good. Okay. They didn't give us the, the other part. Okay? So, not really that bad, right? <laughs> okay. Now, next one's just a little bit more involved. It's really not, it's not that bad. Not that bad. Well, if I tell you it's awful to start with, then y'all just go ahead and check out. <laughs> but if I try and convince you that it's not that bad, some of you I've got a shot with. For some of you. Okay. So, here's how we're going to set up the next one. I think I'm going to run out of room. Okay. So, we change the sign when we put it into the linear factor form. Now, it's already two terms, so I'm going to put a set of parentheses within a set of parentheses, okay? Stick with me. I promise you it, it makes it better, okay? It makes it better. Okay, conjugate pairs means you change the sign in between, or real, really just in front of the square root, okay? You don't change the sign of the two, you just change the sign in front of the square root. Okay. When we put it into linear factor form, it's always minus. So that's just why I put that minus there. Okay, we've kind of been incorporating that in the last few. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, we don't really want to distribute those negatives. Okay. We really don't want to distribute those negatives because let's look at what happens when we coil this. Okay. Um, and I know I haven't even dealt with the other zero yet. Okay. I just want to focus in on this part. Um, so let me leave myself a little bit of space. <clears throat> So x times x is x squared, okay? The outside here, let me write this one out, okay? Let me write this one out. Negative x times 2 minus the square root of 7. Look, mark it. Bleeding here. 2 minus square root of 7. There we go. That's a little bit clearer, okay? That's the outside. x times negative 2 parentheses. 2 minus the square root of 7. The inside gives us, it has a minus, there's an x, and 2 plus the square root of 7. And then the last, we have a negative times a negative, so that's a positive. You can't tell that that's a positive. And we've got 2 plus the square root of 7 times 2 minus the square root of 7. Whew. That's multiplying the last two times. This times that. Okay, negative times negative, and positive, this times that. Uh, okay. So, just look at it for a second. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. X squared. <laughs> it's, just, it's just X squared, all right? Okay. Let's see what happens here. When we distribute this negative X, we get negative 2X. When we distribute it here, we get positive square root of 7X. Distribute the other negative x. We get negative 2x. Negative x times po uh, positive 7 is negative square root of 7x. Well, that's nice. Those cancel. No, the x is not under the square root. It's right behind it. Okay? Those cancel. Yay. All right? Now... Technically, we have to foil out this 2 plus the square root of 7, 2 minus square root of 7, but that's the difference of perfect squares. That's the difference of perfect squares. Okay? So, the first, 2 times 2 is 4. The outside is negative 2 square root of 7. The inside is positive 2 square root of 7. Those cancel. And positive times a negative is a negative. Square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is 7. Yes, that is a plus 4. Because it was positive 2 times positive 2. And it was the plus right in front of it. Right okay, so let me point at what I just did. All right. Then let me turn this off because I don't want to point it again. Squared, whoops, x squared minus 4x minus 3. Oh, no, I didn't. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Negative 2x plus negative 2x. I did mine like terms when I got to this point. Was that negative? I know it now. Like the positive 
because this negative times negative would be positive. This one was a negative times a positive, so it was negative. So I got the positive and the negative. So I'm going to ask you to Okay. So. Another problem. Let's do the other part. I know, because y'all freaked out. We have time? Yes, we do. Stop arguing. Let's go. Well, protest all you want to. I'm doing it. So. Pro protest silently and, and we'll all be good. <laughs> They're not going to protest silently. All right. So, let's see if we can take what we just did and make this a little bit more bearable. Okay? So, when we fill this out, x times x is x squared. The outside, x times negative 1 minus the square root of 5. So that gives us negative x. I'm going ahead and multiplying it out this time, okay? That gives us negative x and positive square root of 5x. I know that that's getting ready to cancel because I know I'm not supposed to have square roots. Okay, but I'm doing it anyways. All right. The inside, negative 1 plus the square root of 5 times x. So negative 1 times x is negative x. <coughs> negative x times the square root of 5 is negative square root of 5x. So those are gone. The last, negative times a negative is a positive. When I foil out that conjugate pair with those radicals, 1 times 1 is 1. The outside and the inside cancel. Positive times a negative is a negative. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. So, that was, I was foiling 1 plus the square root of 5 times 1 minus the square root of 5. So, 1 times 1 is 1. Outside and inside cancel. I just didn't write it all out this time. Yes, I used my prior experience to skip a step. You just had it. We just did it. Okay, almost there. It is not. Well, it may be the longest one you've ever done, but it's not the longest problem ever. All right, so distributing out the x squared, minus 2x cubed minus 4x squared. Distributing out the negative 4x, so negative 4x cubed plus 8x squared plus 16x. Distributing the negative, oh, the whiniest bunch of children. <laughs> That is not an accomplishment. <laughs> x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus x squared plus 22x plus 12. Ta -da. That is the end. <laughs>